Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChartsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, May 12th, 2023. As always, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and share this video with others. Your likes, your shares, your comments is what keeps this channel going. Please don't forget to, to do those actions. Uh, tech stocks, NASDAQ in particular, is approaching 52-week highs. This is obviously good news. Uh, S&P 500 is coiling up with an inside week. I will show you on the graph what that is and why that is sometimes an important sign of a strong move to come. Uh, interest rates are likely headed lower by, ex by extension. Uh, United States Treasury bonds are likely headed higher. And stronger dollar is bad for gold and apparently cryptos. And I'll show you my position in Ethereum uh, at the end of the uh, today's show. So please stay tuned until the end. If you are a subscriber, stay tuned. We will be covering lots of various securities. Note natural gas, crude oil, and copper are going to be covered in the members only section. We will only cover, we will also cover a bunch of um, uh, large cap stocks and quite a bit of various uh, speculative stocks. Uh, for example, Palantir, Riot Blockchain, C Limited, Snowflake, Tencent Music uh, Entertainment, and Weight Watchers, as well as gold related uh, stock, uh, stocks. All right, let's get to it. So, right now we're looking at SP 500. So, once again, on this chart, I'm using my proprietary master charts trading.com price action indicators for which you can find out more about by going into the description section and signing up there. So on this chart, there are this green, blue, red, and yellow lines. They are used for support and resistance and uh, for determining whether or not a security is in an uptrend or a downtrend. In this case, S&P 500 is now in an uptrend. How do I know that? Because all I really needed to know is whether or not the security, in this case S&P 500, has closed above this blue support resistance line, and it did so right there on the 13th of April, Thursday the 13th of April. And from now on, I'm going to say that S&P 500 is in an uptrend. Uh, most stocks are, by extension, going to tend to go up. It's, they're not going to all go up. They're not going to go up all at the same time. Some stocks during the bull markets do go down. Uh, don't make a mistake thinking that you can just trade on correlations. Uh, however, generally speaking, when S&P 500 is in an uptrend, you want to be thinking about buying. You don't want to be thinking about selling short. So in this case, we are indeed thinking about buying. I'll show you in a second my position in NASDAQ. I bought NASDAQ recently, uh, or rather, well, relatively recently. And um, also, uh, I have also recently bought small caps, but that's not exactly what I do normally, but I'll show you that position anyways. So on this chart, uh, we have made a low, a 52-week low on October, uh, right there, October 13th, 2022. And then, basically, since then, we were rising uh, in this zigzag fashion until finally we broke into a new bull market, new uptrend right there in April of this year. So right now, for basically about, since then, for about a month now, we've been trading more or less sideways, really not much of a movement up or down, just kind of trading sideways. So what I'm watching for is this high. Uh, this is August 2020 high. Uh, this was set on August uh, 16th, 2022 of last year. And this is a, an important high uh, because I think, uh, because obviously if, once we break above it, we'll start making new 52-week highs. And 52-week highs usually breed other 52-week highs. We can look on the weekly chart as well. If you trade with my indicators, you need to change um, the interval to weekly where I'm hovering. And if you're trading my, with my indicators, make sure to change the settings to 52. It says right there, it, daily charts use 250, weekly use 52. So right now, uh, there's the breakout above this blue support resistance line, meaning that we're now in an uptrend. Uh, and here's that high from um, 
August 2022. So once again, if we make a high above it, we will begin making 52 Rekais. And then the new records are actually not that far off. This is a new, this is an old record from January 2022. Uh, and if we obviously break above those records, I think it will be quite good for the stocks, obviously. And as I already pointed out, uh, when or if we break above the all-time highs, we will can most likely continue making new highs and uh, at about a thousand points move up. I cannot be excluded. I already explained it in my previous video. So I won't repeat it right now, but possibly next, next time. Looking at this weekly chart, I'm going to just zoom in on this last two weeks. This is the last week of May 1st, and this is this current week that just ended today from May 8th. So notice that this week's range it was pretty small. So basically we kind of, we opened uh, right there. We opened at about, uh, we opened exactly at 4136. Uh, we closed at uh, 4124. So basically very little movement. We went up a little bit, we went down a little bit, but Pretty much we stayed the same. The important th takeaway I want you to see on this chart is the is this fact that from last week, this is the last week's candle, and this is the, this week's candle. So this week's candle is entirely within the previous week's range. So this is called an inside week. This week is inside to the previous one. You can also think about as a triangle consolidation. So triangle consolidations usually are uh, continuation patterns, meaning that um, whichever trend was prevalent before, um, then you know we're going to most likely continue uh, that way uh, once we break out. So we need to see a close above this lines that I just draw uh, for the breakout higher to occur, and of course a breakout lower also is not cannot be ruled out. If that happens, then and a quite logical target for S&P 500 would be a pullback towards this blue support resistance line currently at 4012. So it's about, uh, you know, a few percentage points, really not that much uh, from today's level. So it's about uh, two and a half percent or so. Overall, I think S&P 500 isn't an uptrend, it's in a bull trend. And we want to be thinking about buying. Looking at NASDAQ, this is NASDAQ. Uh, uh, futures and Q1 exclamation point. We can also look at QQQ, uh, NASDAQ 100 ETF. So I actually have a position that I bought NASDAQ 100 ETF back in January of this year. Again, not normally what I do. I usually wait until a breakout, but this was just, I don't know, very tempting uh, and extremely low risk. So far, I was very much correct. Uh, pretty much we've been rising. This is a new high for the move. So we made a low here in October, and this is now a new high for the move for QQQ. Uh, notice this high is from August, that the same uh, you know area, obviously, as the previous I just showed uh, for S&P 500. Because of the correlations, uh, most stock indices move pretty much together in lockstep. So we're looking right now uh, for a breakout uh, above the... Uh, previous August 2022 highs. So for a QQQ, that is, um, you know, a few percentage points away from today's levels. It's literally 2% away. So we're 2% away from beginning to make 52 week highs for NASDAQ. Uh, in my book, this is considered a bullish uptrend uh, when we're very close to uh, records. And then once again, once we break out above the uh, 52 week highs. I think new records are again not that far away. Uh, where those are the new record, those are the old records from uh, 2022 or end of 2021. So you know, once we break out into a new 52 week highs, uh, we have. I mean, still not like it's not just right there, but it's it's reasonable, 21 percent away. Um, and then I think, uh, you know, obviously new records will breed new records. So uh, I am again maintaining bullish bias on uh, stocks because of the breakout of various securities, of various uh, uh, indices above my blue support resistance line, as for example, occurred right there for NASDAQ in April of this year. Uh, let's look at small caps, IWM. 
small caps. So small caps also broke out into a new uptrend where I'm hovering on Wednesday, the 1st of February. Once again, all I needed really to know is to uh, see whether or not the security closed above the blue support resistance line. That's all I need to know to determine, to determine if it is now in an uptrend or a downtrend. Yes, indeed, it is now in an uptrend. We have a deep pullback uh, due to weakness in various uh, small cap banks and the failure of uh, Silicon Valley Bank, of course. You may have heard about it. However, overall, I think, once again, we are in an uptrend. And because of this pullback, the risk is super low. So I actually went ahead and I bought where I'm hovering uh, IWM small caps at 173.84 with my stop being the yellow line. So my stop is, uh, you know, 3% the risk. My stop is 3% risk. Uh, my target, usually what I do is I give two average true range targets. So what is a, what the heck is average true range? So ATR, where I'm hovering, is called ATR. Those are free, indi it's a free indi indicator. It's called average true range, where I'm hovering. All it says is that it will measure uh, on the particular time frame. In this case, it's a daily time frame. Okay. Make sure it's the daily time frame when you trade uh, stocks. Uh, on this particular time frame, small caps move around three dollars per day. We don't know up or down. Okay, so my target is usually two times that. Two times three is six. Uh, you know, three three fifty. It was like, it's like three point one two. So my target is about uh, you know six uh, six dollars and some change. So once that happens, once we get to the target. I will move my stop to entry, okay? So that I will no longer be, uh, you know, scared of losing money. Right now, I'm scared of losing, you know, 3%. But once I get my target, I will be at least at break even. And because, again, of the low, relatively low risk, even right now is a decent place to buy. And we're definitely in an uptrend, okay? So this is the reason why I'm pretty optimistic right now. Um Looking at some of the other securities I want to cover very briefly, high yield bonds, junk debt, G, symbol GNK, this high yield bonds and stocks correlate highly, uh, meaning that they usually move together in lockstep. I will show you the correlation coefficient on weekly chart. Usually I like to look uh, for a correlation. So here's GNK correlating with S&P 500. Notice this yellow graph below here. Currently, it is doing the same thing in almost 80% of the time. And by and large, it does pretty much the same thing with an occasional something else. So meaning that high yield bonds are doing the same thing as stocks. I want them to be doing the same thing as stocks because that's an additional confirmation for my bullish uh, thinking of stocks. I think the stocks are in an uptrend. I think the junk debt is also in an uptrend. Notice this upward facing arrows. These are actual buy alerts. However, not all is well right this instant. Notice this, we, we kind of moved lower on Friday and we're now approaching this uh, May 4th low right there where I'm hovering. I think if that May 4th low doesn't hold, we can continue lower at the very least towards this blue support resistance line, which is about you know 2% away. So like I said, a pullback, a shallow pullback cannot be rolled out. However, I think that pullback would be a buying opportunity. Moving on to uh, higher uh, grade bonds here are the treasuries, IEF, which are seven to 10 year treasury bond fund ETF. So treasury bonds and treasury yields move in opposite directions. Right now, treasury bonds are breaking out. Notice this up, upward facing arrows. They're above this blue support resistance line. I actually bought, I have quite a bit of uh, treasury bonds in this uh, time frame, seven, seven to 10 years. Uh, looking the opposite, looking uh, at their uh, counterpart, TNX, symbol TNX. This is 10-year treasury note yield. So based on this note yield, uh, most of mortgages and various other interest rates are set, like car loans, etc. Currently, it's 3.46%. 3, uh, 3 Notice that we did come down significantly from the peak that occurred in October of last year, and we're continuing to come down. Um, I am watching it very carefully, this level at 3.2, which is the red line. I think once we get to this red line, uh, we could easily just collapse uh, to around 2.8. So 
does that mean that we will be having some sort of a scary event for stocks? Because usually treasury bonds and stocks move in opposite directions. So we cannot exclude a, uh, a flight to safety, so to speak. Uh, if that occurs, uh, we will deal with it, uh, you know, once it occurs. However, uh, we don't necessarily need to think about treasury bonds uh, gaining as a flight to safety. Uh, it could be just for for other reasons. For example, uh, Federal Reserve not be, not deciding not to tighten, uh, not to increase their interest rates anymore. So, uh, I think treasury bonds are in an uptrend. I'm buying treasury bonds, uh, and treasury yields are in a downtrend. So, I think we will see lower rates for mortgages and such. Dollar currency index DXY. I uh, pointed out this potential bottom in. Uh, so notice on this chart where I'm hovering, it's February 2nd lows for, for the dollar. We approached it uh, on Friday and Saturday. Uh, I'm sorry, on the 14th uh, and uh, 13th and 14th of uh, April right there where I'm hovering. And then again, we tried to get as low uh, as that level just recently in um, early May, but we didn't. And we, we rallied. In fact, two of the yes, yesterday and today was had two strong rally days, nice big rally days. And I think uh, for now the support is holding. And I think we will rebound. The dollar will rebound towards uh, this red support resistance line currently at 106. So I'm thinking uh, it already bounced quite a bit. You know, uh, so from today's levels, I think a dollar could bounce another three percent or so. By extension. Uh, we're seeing uh, gold and other precious, you know, gold and silver come under pressure. So notice this high from uh, gold, it's it moved lower. So why is it happening? Because notice where I'm hovering, it's XAU divided by USD. If the lower part of this equation is getting bigger, it will pull this currency pair lower. It's exactly what's happening. We see a dollar appreciating, gold uh, depreciating. Notice on this chart of silver, silver is even more volatile big it's just humongous drop right there yesterday uh, on the 11th of may we are indeed uh, pulling back i predicted this uh, pullback not just this blue arrow i said even back in april uh, that we're going to be pulling back uh, once again i think this would be a buying opportunity when or if we get to about 2250 2290 area so let's watch for that finally bitcoin and cryptos apparently are also uh, filling the a hit from the dollar. I mean, technically, yes, Bitcoin divided by US dollar. However, this is a relatively new phenomenon because before Bitcoin was doing whatever the heck it wanted, all of a sudden now it's uh, more dependent on the dollar. So dollar is gaining, Bitcoin is losing. Uh, however, Bitcoin would become a very good buying opportunity if we get to 25,000, the blue line where I'm hovering. So no, watch for a opportunity to buy uh, Bitcoin around uh, 25,000 level. I wanted to show my position in uh, Ethereum. Ethereum is also highly correlated with uh, Bitcoin. So uh, I was looking at, you know, to buy Bitcoin, but I didn't get the opportunity. I bought Ethereum. Ethereum I bought right there on the 29th uh, of January of this year at $1,626. It kind of did nothing for most of the, uh, until about uh, March. And then finally it moved higher uh, as, far, as far as 2100. So I sold a uh, quarter at 2048, but I bought it at 1,600, 16, 1,600 or so. Uh, so. I bought sold a quarter at 2048, sold another quarter when it pulled back to around um, 1,800. And today my position got stopped out. Why did it get stopped out? Because this is where I trail. So once I get to my target, I trail at the actual blue line. And notice that we're, we're trying to bottom right now at this blue line. And maybe we'll bottom there, maybe not. Looking at Bitcoin, it doesn't seem like we got why like we got there yet. So I think Ethereum will pull pull back even further. So we'll need to be watching uh, for a good buying opportunity for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. Once again, Bitcoin I think would be a great buying opportunity around 2,500, uh, but it could pull back even further. Uh, thank you for watching this far. Uh, 
if you haven't yet hit the like button, please do so. If you have any comments or questions, make a comment or question. If you are ready to sign up, head over to masterchairstrading.com. One word. You can also click on the description of the video. Click on sign up. Sign up for one of the products. I have the trading indicators, the newsletters, and both trading indicators and newsletters together as a package. So. The, in the newsletters, I send out daily alerts and weekly uh, members-only videos about the various securities we trade. Uh, the indicators are these lines on the chart that you can use for pretty much any security to determine uh, whether a security is an uptrend, downtrend, and also you can trade using those lines. Again, thank you for watching and have another great trading week. Bye-bye.